Hello and welcome to my Game Room Tour 2021. To be honest, I did mean to get this video out a lot sooner in the year, but I've been making a few changes to the room that I obviously wanted to include in this video, so now that I've finally done that, I can get on with the tour. This year, to make things a bit different, I'm going to structure this video slightly differently to how it was in the previous two Game Room Tours, and I'm just going to pick the camera up and take you around the room in a more casual way. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea, and let's get going. So here we are at the uh, entrance to the Game Room. This is the uh, door that goes up to the attic. So what I'll do is I'll walk up there as if you were going up to the game room in person. So as you're going up the stairs, if you turn left, there's this little cupboard that... I've basically put everything in here that doesn't look that good on display. So at the top there, we've got loads of empty boxes for consoles and peripherals and stuff. Uh, down there, it looks a little bit of a mess. There's uh, just all sorts of things there, just like more boxes. Uh, props that I use and uh, just like stuff for the computer uh, but also in here we've got this uh, set of drawers here there's just some like gaming magazines and like steel books that I've just put there temporarily uh, but yeah inside these drawers uh, we've got basically all of my game controllers so uh, in this top one I'll just try and show you this we've got all of the Switch controllers, so we've got Joy-Cons in there, we've got the SNES controller, wired controllers, the Ring Fit, uh, Ring. Then in this second drawer down, we've got all of my PlayStation controllers. So we've got every generation of PlayStation controller in there, uh, PlayStation Move stuff as well. And then in the third one, this is just more of a sort of like miscellaneous drawer I guess. We've got some Nintendo stuff in there, uh, some Xbox stuff, uh, but yeah mostly Nintendo. Uh, stuff like NES controllers, GameCube and Wii stuff mostly. Uh, but yeah that's the that's the cupboard. Probably the least impressive part of the game room because it's not technically a part of the game room I guess. But now let's go upstairs into the real deal. So the first thing that you see when you come up the stairs is this display shelf. So I'll give you some uh, close-ups of the stuff here. We've got the GameCube. We've got a little bit of a Super Monkey Ball Shrine with the Engage game and the McDonald's toy. We've got the N64 and the NES. And we've got the PSVR headset. We've got a PS2 Slim, a PS1, Xbox One, original Xbox, the 3DS and a PS Vita, which are the main handheld consoles that I use. Uh, we've got a load of Game Boy stuff there and Game & Watch as well, which is uh, guarded by this gremlin. We've got an, a Crystal original Xbox, which uh, actually was my uh, original original Xbox, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, this one down here is a soft modded one that I needed to play a um, American exclusive game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. Uh, so yeah, that's literally the only reason I own this other original Xbox. Then we've got two Xbox 360s and we've got a load of game books as well. I actually have more books than this, uh, but they're kind of scattered around the house. Uh, like I've got uh, some Spider-Man art books and Spyro art books, but they're um, in the living room. But yeah, uh, also on top here, we've got this Pac-Man lamp. We've got two controller holders, which are holding the PS5 controllers at the moment. Got a Crash figure, Devil figure. We've got the uh, PS1 classic. And we've got this uh, Link statue, which is by First Four Figures. Uh, this is currently the only First Four Figures statue that I've got. Uh, but uh, it's it's really, really good. I want to get more of them in the future, definitely. This is one of the cheaper ones, but I still think the quality is just, like, really, really good. Uh, so, yeah, I'm keeping my eye out for more figures from them. But, yeah, that's the uh, the sort of, like, display cabinet. 
Oh yeah, of course, we've also got this deck that's mounted on the wall. This, of course, was from the collector's edition of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Um, yeah, I think that looks really good there and just, like, completes this area. It looked a little bit empty before without that. But now I think this uh, bit looks actually really, really good. Especially because it's the first thing you see when you come up the stairs. It just instantly sets the, like, tone for the game room. But then... When we move here, we've actually got a brand new uh, addition to the game room, which is the Nintendo shelf. Uh, in the last game room tour, I didn't actually have a Nintendo section, and it was just grouped together with all of the PlayStation stuff. Uh, but because the Nintendo section has been growing so much, uh, I figured that it deserved its own shelf. Uh, so yeah. Uh, before, uh, in the last game room tour, there was actually another computer desk here because me and my girlfriend were using two separate PCs at the time. Uh, so I'll put like a before uh, video on the screen now to show you what it did look like. Uh, but basically because we decided that we were never using the two computers at the same time, we just decided to have one computer up here. Um, so that made room for this area to have another game shelf, which then became the Nintendo section. Uh, so yeah. Just to talk you through this, we've got the uh, Spyro controller holder there that's holding a, um, a Switch Pro controller. Got the mini Nintendo consoles on display just there, guarded by a little Electabuzz. We've got the Crash controller holder, which is holding a second Pro controller. And then as we go down, we start the actual game collection. I've not got many of these Nintendo games, just because I actually never played Nintendo consoles as a kid. Uh, so I never really built up a collection until very recently. Uh, so yeah, not the most impress impressive um, collection here, but um, I still think it looks pretty good. And something else is that all of these games like kind of actually mean something to me as well. Whereas I feel like a lot of other collectors just like kind of collect for the sake of it. Whereas I've played, like, 95% of these and have some sort of connection to them. Uh, but yeah, just to talk you through how I've actually organised this. Obviously it's alphabetical, but it also goes from the first console released, which is the NES. Then goes across and we get more and more modern. The GameCube section has actually grown a lot recently. Uh, last year I only had about five GameCube games, so the collection has more than doubled. Uh, I don't know what it was, but recently I just started, like, discovering all of these GameCube titles that I had never played, and I just kept being impressed by them, so I kept picking them up. And yeah, it's been a really good journey, finally playing all of those. Got the original DS, some Wii games, 3DS games, Wii U games, and quite a uh, substantial collection of Switch games. Uh, the Switch is probably one of my favourite consoles of all time, actually. Um, it's, it's becoming a little bit outdated now, but I still think it's uh, amazing. And it's still got a lot of games coming out for it as well, which is exciting. Uh, but yeah, this collection is probably my fastest growing collection of games that I've ever had. Uh... The um, th main thing that will probably stand out to you is these three games in the middle, which are the limited edition versions of the Oddworld games on Switch. And the limited edition versions came with these cardboard sleeves that are actually illustrated, which normally I wouldn't really like, but I think because it's like almost directly in the middle, it actually kind of looks good and separates the collection a little bit. So um, yeah, I actually quite like the look of that. Of course, we've also got some um, amiibo figures, because who doesn't have amiibo figures, right? I don't have that many, to be fair, but I've just got like some of the ones that I actually really wanted. So yeah, I think that adds a little bit of something to the game shelf. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think that this section and the section that I'm about to show you really make the game room quite significantly better than what it was in last year's video, but let me know if you agree. Just to complete this uh, Nintendo section of the room as well, I've also got these posters which are new. Uh, I've got one there of Animal Crossing, sorry for the reflections. 
and one on the other side as well, which is of Zelda. So both Nintendo themed, and uh, yeah, obviously that matches the area of the room that they're in. But now, we're going to move over to another new section of the game room, which is the new desk area. So before I mentioned that there was uh, two desks, uh, there was one in the Nintendo bit over here, and my desk that had my PC was against this wall. But now we've got just a new, way bigger desk. And of course there's only one of them in the room. And we've put it against this back wall. Which I think looks a lot better than what it did before. So just to talk you through what's going on here, we've got... On the top shelf we've got new speakers. My old speakers were really slowly breaking. It got to a point where one of them just completely stopped working, so I was editing videos in mono for a while, which wasn't great. But yeah, these new ones are really good and look way more professional as well. Got a light for when I'm streaming, just to make it a bit brighter, because my webcam can get quite dark. Got this uh, wireless booster for the internet. If you remember in last year's game room tour, I mentioned that one of the issues of being in the attic room was that the internet isn't very good. Uh, but now we've got these boosters. Uh, it's actually really, really good, which has enabled me to stream and upload videos faster and stuff, which is which is always nice. Got some plushes, just to make it look a little bit uh, more visually interesting. Uh, and then on the second bit, we've got two monitors. Um, I did initially think that the desk was going to be big enough to fit three, uh, but because the monitors here are so big, I think this one is 27 inch, uh, it can only fit two. Which is obviously fine, because having three monitors is a bit excessive anyway. Uh, but yeah, two monitors is easily good enough for me. Uh, we've got this webcam, which I use to stream. It's not a particularly good webcam, it's quite like... It's quite a budget one really, but it gets the job done. Uh, we've got my new mic, which is attached to a microphone arm, which I kind of recently picked up as well. This is just handy because it, it's far easier now to just do voiceovers and it's really handy for streaming as well. Uh, so I think this was an awesome uh, like upgrade that I did relatively recently. Uh, then we've got uh, these two little speakers, which are just rubbish, uh, like USB ones. But the reason that I've got these is because when I am streaming a game, uh, I put the game on this monitor and I just use this monitor with all of the like stream information and the chat. Uh, and so the game audio actually comes through these little speakers for when I'm uh, streaming or just playing a game on this monitor in general. Uh, so that's why they're there. Then the PC audio will come through these big ones. Uh, this little box here is one of my many HDMI switch boxes. Uh, I'll go into exactly what this is for in a little bit when we take a look at the PC, uh, not the PC, when we take a look at the TV setup. Uh, I've got one of the two switches, uh, this one is my girlfriend's, um, this one is plugged into the monitor and the other switch is plugged into the main TV uh, so that we can do like simultaneous multiplayer uh, like on Splatoon 2 or Mario Kart or whatever. Uh, underneath, just got the actual PC tower. Uh, what's funny about this is that the actual PC inside is actually really small, and yet we've got this absolutely massive case, uh, which is a bit silly when you actually open it up. But uh, it looks impressive from the outside at least. Uh, and then I guess the only other thing is this little shelf here that's attached to the desk, which I've just put these two like boxes in. Loads of wires and like portable hard drives in there, just stuff that I'd need easy access to. Uh, but yeah, that's the that's the desk area. I actually think I'm actually really happy with this. I think it looks really good. Um, looks way better than having the two desks. Uh, like when you go back and watch the old game room tour, I think it looks way better now. But then. We move on to one of the standout things in the game room, which is this massive TV. Uh, this hasn't been upgraded at all, it's still the same one from last year, so it's a 55-inch curved uh, 4K Samsung TV. 
Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm not sure exa what exact like model it is or anything, but yeah, it's a, it's a good TV. Got this really big TV unit, which needs to be big because of the amount of consoles that I've got there. So just to run you through that. Uh, I've got the PS2 there. I've got the PS3, the PS4, the PS5, the Wii, the Wii U, and the Switch. So these consoles are all of the ones that I actually like actively used. These ones are all plugged into the main TV. Um, whereas obviously the ones over in that uh, display cabinet over there aren't plugged in because there's no TV over there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, so to talk through the way that I actually capture game footage, it's a little bit complicated, but um, it, it it's really, really good because it basically just means that I can capture footage from anything uh, without messing about with any wires. Uh, so just to run you through that, basically any console that uses an SD video output, so for example the PS2 there, uh, I run component cables into this component switch box. Uh, then from this switch box, the component cables go into the RetroTINK 2X back there, which upscales it to HD and uh, just basically turns the component cables into a HDMI cable. The HDMI cable goes into this HDMI switch box right here. I'll just let that focus. Um, and then obviously the consoles that have HDMI output by default are also plugged into this HDMI switch box. Uh, this switch box runs into a splitter, which separates the signal into two HDMI cables. One of them runs straight into the big TV. You can see me in the reflection there, hello. And then the other HDMI cable runs into this capture card. And then there's another HDMI cable on the output of the capture card, which runs to this HDMI switch box. And from there, it's plugged into this monitor. So basically, the short version of this is that any of these consoles are always plugged into this TV, and they're always plugged into this capture card, and they're always plugged into this monitor. So that basically means that I can really easily stream from this monitor, and I can also always record from this capture card. Uh, so yeah, it's a really good setup. It's very complicated and uses a lot of wires, but it works, so I'm happy with it. So now we move on to another one of the like big features of the game room, which is this main game shelf. Uh, this is the PlayStation shelf, so this is easily the biggest of my um, game collections uh, just because I was always like a PlayStation kid, so a lot of these games are from my childhood. Uh, but yeah, let's take a closer look at this section. Uh, so here we've got a blinky plush on top of a CRT TV. Uh, this CRT TV is only ever used to play light gun games. I don't use it for just like normal games just because there's no point when everything is already plugged into the big 55 inch TV there. Uh, but obviously light gun games don't work on modern TVs. So uh, this, that's basically why I've got this. Uh, the PS1 is home to all of my favorite light gun games like Point Blank, Time Crisis, Ghoul Panic, etc. Uh, so that's plugged into the CRT TV. Uh, just got some like plushes and pop figures on top of here just to use as decorations. Massive Squirtle plush there with his little baby Squirtle, which you can see there. Yeah, then we move down to the actual games. Uh, we've got the PS1 section to start things off. That goes all the way across the top shelf. Uh, something that you'll probably notice is that I've got quite a lot of uh, Crash Bandicoot merchandise. That's just because me and my girlfriend really like the Crash Bandicoot series. Uh, so much so that we've even named our cat Crunch after Crunch Bandicoot, of course. Then we move on to the second shelf. Even more PS1 games. Then the PS2 section. 
I've actually been collecting quite a lot of PS2 games recently, uh, so that collection's been growing quite exponentially as well. Go down to the third shelf and the PS2 games continue. Then we move on to PSP games. I've got a really small PSP collection just because I don't even own the console anymore. Uh, I did own one, and that's uh, when I got these games, but I sold the PSP, but just decided to keep the games just to use as display pieces more than anything. We move on to PS3. Oh yeah, and one PS Vita game at the end there, which is uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits. Really need to get more Vita games because I think it's quite a good system. But yeah, PS4 at the bottom. And then as we move along... The final section is the PS5 area, which of course is quite small because the PS5 is really new. And we've just got some plushes and figures in the end there as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think, like I said, this is one of the standout bits of the entire room. Uh, I just think it looks quite good and looks quite significant as well because it's quite a big shelf set up. So I'm really happy with that as well. Now, the kind of last area of the game room is this bit over here. We've got these two posters on the wall, one for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and one for The Last of Us. Uh, but the last game shelf is over in this little, like, uh, corner area. And this is the Xbox section. Uh, I've got some Yoshis on top just to use as uh, decorations. But we go from original Xbox to Xbox 360 to a tiny Xbox One collection, just because I've never really got into that console particularly. And then PC games, of which I've actually got quite a lot, because I used to be really into PC stuff, uh, but not so much anymore, just because I don't really have a good PC. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that collection. Um, I guess um, another thing to show you, actually, is the fact that we've got three posters on this back wall as well. Uh, two Crash Bandicoot ones and one Spyro one, just to give that back wall a little bit of decoration, make it look interesting. Might look a bit empty if that wall was completely blank. Uh, of course, we've got the sofa there directly across from the TV. Uh, the sofa itself can comfortably fit two people on it. At a push, it could probably fit three people. Uh, but obviously, most of the time, it's just me and my girlfriend, so that that works out well. Um, and I guess the only other thing really to show you is uh, this bit down here. This little thing is a composite splitter, so um, the wires from the PS1 run down into this, and then this outputs two signals, one going to the CRT TV, and then another one which goes all the way around the back of the shelves and out here, and comes out somewhere behind there. And the idea with that is that I can just unplug the component cables from the RetroTINK, uh, plug in the composite cables, and then I can record anything that I need from this TV. Um, in case I ever need to make a video about a light gun game or anything. I've never actually utilised that, uh, but I basically just had this lying around and figured that I might as well actually use it for something. Uh, so yeah. That's, that's what that is. But yeah, I um, really hope that you like the room. I'll just give you a little overview here, just walk around a little bit. Uh, this is probably pretty much what it's going to look like now, uh, like forever. I don't really see us doing anything significant uh, to like change the layout of this room, because I think we've got it pretty much perfect. Um, if I was being picky, there's a couple of things that might change. Uh, so one thing being, uh, I kind of want to change the carpet. It's not bad, uh, but it, it red isn't really my favourite colour or anything, and this was just the carpet that was in here when we moved in. So one day it might be nice to get that replaced. Uh, another, another small issue is the window. It's single glazed, and it's just really old-fashioned as well. So maybe one day I'll get that replaced. Uh, get a double glazed modern window in there. Um, because at the moment this one not only lets the cold in quite a lot, but it also leaks noise, which is annoying when I'm like filming or recording voiceovers. Um, but yeah, 
Oh yeah, another thing that I actually didn't mention in the last game room tour that's actually quite interesting is that everything in this game room is being powered by this one double plug socket. Uh, so we've got two extensions plugged into there. Uh, one of the extensions is just behind that TV unit, which powers everything here. And then another extension, you might actually be able to see down there, uh, that is used to power the desk area. But yeah, there is no other plug sockets in this room, so like, there's no uh, plug socket over here to like plug in any of this stuff or plug in that lamp, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, but without ripping the walls apart to install new plug sockets, uh, I think the extension leads are doing a pretty good job powering all of this stuff. <laughs> So yeah, I don't really see us getting new plug sockets put in anytime soon, just because like I say, you would have to rip into the walls and it would just cause absolute chaos. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much the finished game room. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do one of these next year, because I would imagine that the room's going to look like exactly the same as it does now. Uh, but you never know. You never know. I might, I might do something drastic which completely changes it. In that case, I'll definitely update you all. And that's a wrap. That's the Game Room Tour 2021 done. Let me know in the comments what you liked about the Game Room, and let me know if there's anything that you would change about it too. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon. And until next time, bye!